my name is uh, Fred Martinez. Uh, I'm going to present this research in behalf of the co-authors, Angelica Rendon, Fernando Martinez. We are professor at the University of Distrital in Bogota, Colombia. And we are working in a, in a small uh, research group, research group that is working in several uh, in several fields. Uh, we are working. Uh, some professors are working in in um, uh, power converters, and others is, uh, are working in um, digital image uh, embedded system. And in some way, most of these works um, join in this line in robotics. Uh, the title of this research is um, a swarm based blocking control algorithm for exploration and coverage of unknown environments. And we want to work specifically in robotic path planning. That is the, the area of, our, of this work. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick roadmap of this presentation. First, uh, I want to um, talk a little bit about the justification and object of this uh, research. Uh, very fast about the problem formulation the methodology, how it works uh, our algorithm, um, some results uh, in performance, and uh, well, the conclusions. Uh, first, the justification. Uh, we postulate four uh, main objectives uh, to build in this research. First, um, we saw the importance of exploring uh, in no environments and different uh, tasks and different uh, problems, real problems. For example, uh, environment, environmental monitoring, industrial inspection, healthcare, search and rescue is one of the more important for us. Uh, military and space exploration, all of them uh, rely heavily on efficient exploration on unfamiliar territories. Uh, second, um, the current uh, solution, the most of the solution, have limitation in exploration, uh, mostly in, in the case with a single robot approach. We, in these cases, uh, we have problem in, in the scalability, the, the, um, the control, the, the, the problem, uh, the coverage. Uh, we are working most of the time in coverage. Um, and even with complex real environments. That is one of the more important things for us. Uh, we want to work with the swarm facet approach. Uh, we have problems in this case, but we think it's more uh, efficient for real uh, environments. Um, third, swarm robotics is a solution, or get, uh, at least we want uh, to believe that this is one of the best solutions for this kind of problems. Uh, in this case, we want to build an algorithm, but at the same time, we want to uh, propose a simple and cheap scheme with a, a very simple hardware and a very simple algorithm uh, that actually work in real problems. And finally, um, this is a field with a lot of uh, research, but still we think there is a lot of room for improvement. So uh, in this case, we want to work specifically in the processing. We want to work with the really small processors, um, energy cost. Obviously, we want to improve adaptability and work with uh, real robots. Uh, that means heterogeneous agents. These are the objectives of this particular work. Uh, the first, like I said before, we want to develop a novel swarm facet control algorithm. This is most of the presentation. Uh, we want uh, an efficient task coordination, uh, improve the robustness of our system. They are three uh, very important objectives. Um, very important, uh, reduce the cost of the solution, uh, we are thinking in processing and energy. Uh, 
um, improve the adaptability with real agents. Uh, all of the robots, uh, in the idea, the main idea is build robots very similar, but in the real world, never are gonna gonna be equal. So, in real uh, implementation, all the robots are different. So we want that uh, the algorithmic work with uh, some specific consideration in functionality, but uh, they don't have to be equal uh, between them. And finally, uh, validation in the real world. So we are working real hard uh, to, to prove that actually our approach work in real environments. Well, this is the problem formulation. I'm going to show you really, really fast, really simple. Uh, we are working with a set of robots, in this case, N robots. Um, our set is always finite. So we have one, two, three, I don't know, uh, N quantity or among uh, of robots, but uh, they are always uh, finite and they always work in a finite environment. We are uh, defined this environment like W, a B-dimensional environment. Uh, this environment have, uh, uh, is bounded, have uh, its limits, and we define these limits like um, part of the obstacles. Actually, there is a set of uh, obstacles. Uh, I define these obstacles like O, and if we remove these obstacles from the environment, we have the free uh, space that is the space for the robots. Um, we uh, define the state of every robot with a vector. This is the state vector. Uh, the state vector basically uh, have the position of the robot and its orientation. And we define the movement the robot in the environment with uh, x dot, the velocity of the robot. We are working with a simple robot, so we have a set of uh, differential robots. Um, to define this uh, velocity x dot, we just have to define the speed of the two motors. And actually, we only are working with uh, two speeds uh, the motor is uh, working or not. So define this, this uh, x dot vector is really, really easy for the control. Um, we have a, a exchange for the task allocation um, in our algorithm. All the robots have the same program. All the robots are mostly similar, but they don't work in the same uh, uh, way all the time. We have uh, at least in this uh, approach two behaviors. We have our uh, robots in the inside and the outer robots. Uh, the outer robots are the exploring robots and they uh, define uh, where the system have to move in the environment and the inner robots just try to man uh, keep the formation inside the, the system. The performance in this uh, algorithm we, is, is evaluated by four metrics. We are using metrics for the time, for, for the completion of the task, and some two metrics for the structure of the system. Uh, and finally, the, the challenge is try to make that this algorithm actually works in a very cheap hardware. This is one of the robots that you see is really, really cheap. We build these, these robots with, a, with acrylic. Uh, we only use two servo, servo motors, um, one controller and a couple sensor. The more important sensor is the, the LiDAR. We're using a small LiDAR. And we use a microcontroller that actually have a communication capability. So in this case, there is communication between the robots. And we are using Bluetooth for that kind of communication. 
but the communication is only and uh, sometimes not all the time between uh, neighborhoods in a, a specific area in the environment so it's it's not all the time that help a lot to with the energy of the system for the movement in the environment we are using a coverage strategy uh, the idea is to work with different tasks but in this case we are mainly focused in the in the coverage of unknown environments so in this case we design a specific uh, behavior for the robots that make uh, this kind of uh, attacks uh, simple we are using uh, inside every robot a uh, bidimensional coverage matrix every robot have to see and memorize, memorize the position of specific things in the environment. How is the navigation? We, in the environment, locate one, two, three. We decide in every test a specific number of landmarks. And the system has to find, move to the landmarks, to the target points. So, um, we use uh, in every robot this coverage matrix to try to memorize the information that actually the robot have in that moment and try to share that information with the others, with the neighborhood robots. Um, the strategy uh, try to find that information, but only a small quantity of robots is searching the environment. The other robots just follow the neighbors. And the, this kind of uh, role is changed uh, along the navigation in, in the environment to try to, to keep the most of the battery in the robots. This is it's an example of the matrix in every robot. Initially, uh, well, all the environment is, 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 is segmented in, in these small areas regions the size of these regions depends on the size of the robot so uh, in general is very accurate um, initially this the matrix is empty uh, every time that the robot identify uh, some region close to him just mark the region and uh, save store the information and share that information with, with its neighbors in this case, we are using three uh, numbers to identify the regions. So when the, the robot identify a free region, just marking the number one, we, in this small red rectangle, there is a obstacle. If the robot identifies the obstacle, just mark the region with a number two. If uh, the robot know the region, just mark the matrix with a zero. For the movement, we define a, dyna a dynamic in, in the robots. So uh, we define a repulsion parameter to try to avoid that the robots actually uh, may conflict in the navigation between them. So uh, if the robot detects an obstacle or, or, or other robots, just move uh, behind that kind of obstacle. We are... Uh, measuring the distance between the robots with a leader, and that information is stored inside every robot. These are the metrics that we are using in, in this uh, approach. We are using four uh, metrics, the coverage percentage, that is uh, the size of, uh, of the environment that is actually uh, coded by the, by the system, by, by the robots. In whole, the experiments, all the, the text, that uh, percentage is always the same, 100%. Uh, because we let that the test run uh, the time that is needed to finish the task. The turnaround time is actually the more important metric. Uh, the group metric and the order metric that uh, tell me how uh, is the, 
the, the group, the, the system, the, the system in, in, in most of the time. Uh, the most of the experiments are conducted in the same environment, is fixed. In this case, we don't change the environment. Uh, we all use a search tasks, but with different uh, objectives. Um, all the robots are almost the same, but uh, no work don't, uh, don't, don't have the same performance. So there is the, the difference between them. And all the movement in the environment is recorded by a digital camera. Beside this, we build a model in computer. Uh, we have the dynamic of the robots. We have the characteristic of the environment. So we replicate this condition by software and try to fix our model to replicate the, the behavior of the real robots. So we have results uh, experimental and by simulation. Well, uh, like I said before, 100% uh, progress in all the, the experiments um, uh, because we let the, the, the simulation run all the time. This is part of the results. Uh, like you see, we have in the middle the column of uh, real laboratory test. Uh, at the right, we have the result of simulation. The results, this model was always fixed to try to mimic the real uh, operation. And in the first column, we have the condition for every test. We have only one of the tests here. In this case, we just want to, to try to to identify how the system of the algorithm works when we have different number of target in the same uh, in the same environment. So we all always run the experiment in this case with four robots uh, and let the, the experiment run all the time that the experiment need. Uh, every experiment we was uh, uh, run time time times. Uh, the difference is, is the first uh, experiment, we don't have uh, any target, just coverage the, the environment. In the second, we have one target. In the third, we have two targets. Uh, in the last one, we have three different targets. Those uh, all the same. Uh, the algorithm use decentralized communication, decentralized, decentralized control, and just use uh, local communication and local sensing. The communication is uh, through Bluetooth in, and every robot has its own matrix of coverage. Um, and our uh, algorithm uh, all the time was uh, making the best coverage possible of the environment. Uh, the time that every system in every test uh, was different because the condition for every text uh, was always different. The position, the initial position of the robots always change. The number of uh, collision always change, but uh, after a several uh, simulation and several text, uh, we can build a normal distribution of every condition. So we can always make a model of every condition. Um, with these results, we can uh, try to replicate how will be operate the system if the condition was a little bit different. In this moment, we continue working uh, improve the performance in, uh, the, in terms of uh, robustness, we want uh, the, that the system work if n uh, quantity of robots just crash, uh, leave to work, but the others continue. So we want that the test in several, in several condition, in the worst possible condition, if it's possible that actually uh, the system continue and fin uh, finish the tax um, program it. Um, basically, is this the, the, the work? If you have any question, 